I'm thinking I'm going here through a lecture. Whenever you have a detour, that's when the Spirit is telling you, we work around the clock to get you certain places to do certain things. You see what I'm saying? To, to do certain things. And so, um, those, but ironic that after we did what we did in Birmingham to match the souls with four goddesses, and we did what we did in Birmingham, you know, all the people in Birmingham started saying, well, we've been seeing the four girls standing in the window for 46 years. And it's common. Everybody drive out of church and see the four girls standing in the window. But see, we lost a lot of our spiritual know-how to do things. And not just from Africa, but just spiritual stuff to do things from slavery to a certain time. Because even in slavery, and after slavery, our, uh, our parents and our grandparents would just do things that the Spirit would tell them about things that, that was left over from Africa or, uh, or, or what have you, and you know, and, and, and different things. We knew things then, but as we got as as we got more and more in uh, the modern era of the 20th century, in the late 20th century, by that time we got a little more sophisticated in the church aspect and things, and then all of a sudden things become too taboo. So certain things happened. So there was a there was a vortex there at the Little Rain Motel, and the reason why I came and I came here. I spoke here in the Lord on College first, and then I spoke to the Nation of Islam back in 93. Now, was it, it was 16 years ago. Well, 16 is also the number of Osiris. And that's the Osiris, but it's also the resurrection. So what went on a few minutes ago, and it's going on now, because the lecture is a part of that, it was a retro resurrection cycle. You see, it's, you see, we had to do the same thing in Baltimore with the Haitian spirits. With, with, with the Haitian spirits. So it's a resurrection. In this particular case, we wasn't resurrecting Martin Luther King. He ascended. As a matter of fact, we heard from him when his wife died. She died in Mexico, Corona Scottin. She died in Mexico. Um, but we was, you know, she was at one of these cancer clinics. And so he came through and we was discussing, and he said, I snatched her out. And this one I know was very high being or what happened. We started talking, and he kissed me on my forehead. Now, if anybody heard my tapes from the 90s, I used to talk a whole lot of shit about Martin Luther King. You see what I'm saying? But to show you that even in, in, in that spirit realm, they know that down here, everything that we go through is nothing but a, a, a program. It's nothing but illusion. Because when, when we ask the question on the spirit realm, where is Malcolm and Elijah Muhammad now? They say they're together. So they said, you know, they say we have a... Uh, so each group that interface down here, they say, well, Booker T. Washington, Marcus Garvey, um, what's your boy, Souls of Black Folks. Two more. They got a group that they hang out in. You see, in that realm. They said, you know, John Henry Clark, John G. Jackson, now Ivan Van Sertum, they have a group that they hang out in. You see, so Malcolm and Elijah, because they were in a circle, they are together. You see what I'm saying? And we still argue on this earth about the different ideologies in the spirit realm. It was like, well, up here those are just programs, which means that those are just series of events of illusion. It never happened. It's just stuff to get the soul to go from A to Z. You see, you get the soul, the soul to go from A to Z, and all. So yeah, so I guess I'll just share with you wet in a few minutes. You know, <laughs> and that's cool as pink. I wear the white one. I was in New York. I'm down. My man boots is shining. But uh, you get the soul to go from A to Z. So there was a movie that came out about two or three years ago uh, called The Lost Room on the Sci-Fi Channel. And it's, it's on DVD now. I'm a, it's on DVD. It's called The Lost Moon. And in there, they were talking about some type of things that happened at a hotel. And it created a vortex in time. You see what I'm saying? So, so many people suffered behind the Martin Luther King assassination that that hotel was a vortex that was trapped of black people suffering. You see? 
See, there's things in the spirit realm that suffering is when a person dies and they have negative thoughts. The person could be died, could be dead for years. Could be dead for years. But their thought forms go on the astral plane and they bounce around because they have created an entity from these thought forms. That's why they say thoughts are things. Watch your thoughts. So when you have people with negative energy and they die, their thought forms go on the astral plane. They're not even dead for years and they bounce around. And they usually come down to find bodies, not to possess, but to hover around. So this is what happens. Let me give you an example so everybody has this. You ever have a uh, time, you got to do libations, you got to do all this stuff, I got to do my infomercials. You ever have a time when you feeling something is wrong, something is negative, but you can't account for anything going on wrong in your life? You know, like, just, you know, my life's still on. Um, you know, I got gas in the car. Why am I feeling like something's wrong? That's a person's thought form. And what they do is they go, but how they actually exist and how they, they gain energy is they have people that have negative energy around them all the time, and that's the people they cling to. You see what I'm saying? So you can even have, so you can even pick up a person's thought forms, and then it, 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 it molds with your negative energy, and you're walking around with some negative thought forms of a person might have died 60 years ago. So to, to, to explain what just went on, you know, that created ultimate riots around the country when, when, when the Martin Luther King said, they never resolved it. You know what I'm saying? They, ne they never resolved it. And all kind of discrepancies, you know, the, uh, one of the resolving was that the conscious community, all five boroughs, came together, a U United Africa movement in 1999, and indicted Jesse Jackson for being in the conspiracy of that. You see what I'm saying? Because that night, they locked down Memphis. And they let no automobiles and no planes or nothing to leave or enter the city. And they let one plane out, and Jesse Jackson was on it. Right, right, You know what I'm saying? They had a black power group. group. The brother said the name of it. What was the group? The black power group that was in Vegas was in the hotel, and Jesse Jackson came, called down, and had him thrown out. When they asked, was that his job, Jose Williams said, no, that was my job. And so what is Jess, Jessica Jackson, you see what I'm saying, doing with uh, uh, throwing these people out, which means they had guns, they could have protected him, or you know, they could have shot the shit out of whoever shot Mark with me. Yeah. But, they, but they, were, they, they threw them out of, out of the, um, yeah. Uh, and so, and so my, and, and, and it's interesting here because they have people that have these mentors in college. And these mentors mentor you for the government to do certain tasks, and then they infiltrate you into the conscious community and different things that's going on. And he was one of those particular people. It always come from a college aspect because I had an incident. It took me 20 years to figure out. And this incident was I was an artist, I was the best artist in the state of South Carolina at the time, on the college level. So, I was so good at your they could, they could go and, and, and take pictures of your work in college and sit off and get grant money. So with me, I had a list of A's, I, I, on my art class, I, I made B's this three semesters in a row. So I just had all these A's, because they could say, give him, keep him happy. Because we didn't pay. So I made Dean's list, and I got called to a meeting. It came in, it was about 40 of us, Dean's list people, some fraternities. And they said, well, we got a golden opportunity to make money this summer. You're going to be selling encyclopedias. But they were drilling us all up in our face. I'm like, well, Am I running for the presidency? Am I getting a high security? 
security clearance for the CIA just for fucking encyclopedias? And they were coming and asked me a question. I answered the question right, but I didn't answer it to some profiles thing. So I didn't answer it the way they wanted me to answer it. And it was like, no, this is one that he can't be controlled. So what happened, they would come and ask you a question, and when your question didn't jail or whatever, your series of questions, they'd ask you to leave. So they asked me a question, and I said it a certain way, and obviously it, 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 it's a certain profile they're looking for, and I didn't fit the description of the, the profile, so they asked me to leave. Now, I didn't think no more about it. Then in 1990, they were doing a, 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 a thing on Bill Clinton. They said, well, Bill Clinton, when he was at college, he used to sell encyclopedias. <laughs> so I said, hmm. I said, yeah, they, they asked me to do that one time. I still didn't put it together. And then I had a brother that went to Benedict College with me. He's Dr. Buzzard's great-grandson. Uh, uh, great-grandson. And you know, Dr. Buzzard is the famous, you know, Savannah, basically Beaufort, South Carolina, the Sea Island, the African village. This was years later, you know, you know, everybody said, that's Dr. Buzzard, grandson. He was a Kappa. You see, Kappa uh, looked like El Devar and shooting. <laughs> this nigga was rolling. But he said, you know, I, I said, you the L Lord, man. You got all these women following me. But he's like, yeah, I've been in this. So when I so years later, I'm in New York and he and, and, and doing stuff in New York and Philly, and he comes to the lectures. I'm oh man, what's up? And he, I said, man, I'm out. he said, Oh, I've been in this stuff for years. I said, Yeah, we know. And so anyway, was in a, we was we was doing a sit down. Uh, you know, where we get, get together and we sit down and we, we start going on the camera and start discussing knowledge. And he said, well, there's two kind of Catholics. He said, the regular Catholic, you know, they go and dance and do all the step shows and, you know, all the college, you know, uh, stuff. And then, now I'm bring my towels. You got another towel back there? Yes. Yeah. So, he said, but well, there's... Another one where they invite you to a meeting. And you got to answer some stuff, and then they take you on into this mentoring program. And I said, oh, my goodness, I was invited to that meeting. You see what I'm saying? I was invited to that meeting. You see? So this it's, it's not the Boulay, because it's something like Boulay is a pro postgraduate thing, you see? So it wouldn't be that. So even like some of the rappers in the book, they, you got to be in college. You got to be a. It has. You have to be a, a graduate of college to be in the book, because it's a postgraduate society. So they got all this stuff from like Jay Z in the book, and you see what I'm saying? You know. So it's you know all this type of stuff. So uh, it's just the just the the rumors and stuff or whatever the, the, the mythology of it that got out of hand. So anyway, this is the same thing. I do know that they mention these people on college. And it's interesting here because they said that Martin Luther King had time out about it and realized there was an agent among them and the gig was up. And they even showed some stuff on them that night when, he, when Jesse tried to shake his hand. He kind of turned away. The gig was up and down. I think they said that Jesse said, we got to move now. He got to move now, and the next day he was dead. He just said, call him out on the balcony. I still want to know why he's the only one standing up on that balcony. <laughs> a man with death threats for most of his life, for most of his career. So the point I'm trying to make it is, I'm just giving you that, but the point here is, not only that, there was a major suffering that went down behind. They had riots all over the country. You see what I'm saying? Riots all over the country. And as a result, it created a that, that the incident where the actual crime was committed created a porthole and they said that we could not move forward spiritually until that was resolved. And that's why I'm here today and didn't even know it until they gave me the full thing this morning. So what I had to do is and I had to go in and I had to invoke, I had to put these certain pictures down and I had to invoke a leg bar figures, a leg bar, a new bus, Ganesha, Ishu, um, Tahuti, oh yeah, this is good, yeah, flowers and stuff, which is cool, because this <laughs> today in the in the women community is Beltane. And Beltane is 
a festival that they celebrate all over the world of May Day. And they have a pole in this, which is a pole is also the phallus symbol, which is resurrection. So there's a reason why I came on May the 1st. That's the other So you need to get into the whole wicked thing, because guess what the wicked thing is? You know, our people used to live in Europe before the Ice Age. But our people used to live in Europe and was black people. But that was originally our land. And Stonehenge was built by black people. By your Druids, which was originally black. And so a lot of your Wiccan information is Druids, science, and mysteries. And that's our stuff. Even to the point where the top witches, in, they invoke our set. Isis as the chief deity. You see. So today is Beltane that they do. And it has something to do with a mystical pole. It has something to do with the whole coming of spring to the flowers. That's why I wrote a picture. I said it somewhere. But I, like I said, I know how to get stuff off. You know, you know. The way you wear a lot of white clothes, you better learn how to get some stuff off. And you get it while it's still wet. With some good, just some good soap and water, you can get some stuff off. But anyway, so the fourth, but also this is Urzuni, the pink. That's why I wore it, and it also represents it also represents spring. But also Urzuni is the chief goddess of 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 um, of Hudum, and the whole Haitian images is alive and kicking. Mm. You see what I'm saying? It's alive and kicking. You see what I'm saying? So it's a lot of stuff that's dealing with that. And so, in short, um, this whole thing had to go down. So it's a reason why it's on May 1st. So what we're actually dealing with now, everything we're dealing with now is a spiritual policy that we are taking place. They talked about these group of people that will rise up in the last days. And ironically, they're called the Hemet Spirits. H-E-M-M-I-T. That's the Virgin's Hieroglyphic Dictionaries at the Temple of Denver, and it says there will be a group of people, it says pre-existent souls that will come together in the last days. You see what I'm saying? And I didn't change my name to that. I'm just trying to say, well, what part of that prophecy is true? Because I'm lecturing on this stuff. The point, so the point I'm trying to make it is, when they talk about the prophecy, they talk about the prophecy. Now, what I can do, I have the prophecy right here. This is a raggedy piece of paper. This is the hermetic of the prophecy of us going into slavery. The 5,000 year old prophecy, we're going to go into slavery, we're going to live in this land. All kind of horrible things going to happen to us. And although we would look like we were, were Egyptian or African, our mind would be of a, a, another race. Now that right there is the great prophecy of Because if there ever was one that happened, although you may look African or Egyptian as a savior, your mind would be of another race. You see, that's it, this prophecy. So what I'm going to do, this is a, uh, until I find a better one. I got, you know, this is this is one I did about 10 years ago. This is the prophecy. What I can do is leave this behind if people want to immediately, and you can go and zero out some, and immediately get it. So you might have somebody to get up and read this prophecy today. You know, read this prophecy today. So, so in so many words, um, so many words, we are going through this coming of the great old ones, the return of the great old ones, the return of the angelic kingdom, that's what we're doing. And it's being hidden from the rest of the world. As a matter of fact, Afghanistan and Pakistan and all that where they had war with, isn't it interesting that in 1999 they had major celebrations over in Afghanistan and Pakistan in that whole area. They said, what are you celebrating? They said, it's supposed to be a group of gods. It's, 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 there's a group of gods that's, that's rising in America. Who else are we talking about? You see, a man came from India. Um, uh, summer solstice. A man came from India, India, summer solstice, 2008. 
So while I was, I was, when I, during the summer social, I was over in England doing a lecture. Um, um, doing a lecture. Uh, a, a, a guy came from India to Atlanta to announce to black people. They said we had a prophecy. Uh, uh, there was a prophecy that one would come from India to a group of black people in America and announce the rise of Kalki. Kalki is the last avatar of Vishnu. He's called the Lord Maitreya, the last form of Buddha, the future Buddha. The last avatar of Kalki is Vishnu. He's also known in the book of Revelation of the rider of the white right horse. Also Pegasus. That whole clash of the type. We're going to get into all that today. Stuff they get black people. I'm talking about the real deal stuff. Um, uh, different societies got these the, the, the disciplines. So let me explain this to you so that you know. Um, they had in ancient Egypt, you had a multi-layered education. That's why the Afrocentric scholars, they talk about mystery system, mystery system, mystery system. But they, they can only, when you ask them what it was, they can only give you the educational part. But they didn't realize what happened was the mystery system, when it was taken up into Europe, you would have seven liberal arts and all the other little stuff, you know, whatever the seven liberal arts and stuff was. And then you would have your higher mysteries, which is your metaphysical occult. Realities and the highly mysteries. So what happened was, after the Moors was ousted in these secret societies, what they did is they divided it in half. They said, we're going to give the seven liberal arts to the edu field of education. And we'll draw from that and make discipline out of that. And the occult and the mystical side, that will belong to the largest secret societies. You see what I'm saying? You get what I'm coming from here? So, as a result, then the seven liberal arts people grow up with this knowledge that they have true education, and as a result, they think that other stuff is all spooked. And what they didn't realize is that they, it was divided and happened. It was, one portion was given to the lodges and later on the ruling class and stuff like that. You see? You see? So, so this is this to, 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 to bring this thing in. It's, it's science, but it's high science. It's the highest science that we used to have. It's our science that you don't know. That that, that you know that that you have been um, that's been hidden from us. That's been hidden from us. You see, and this is what it is. It's like let me give you an example. Um, how many people in the Lord's Science Temple? How many people in the Lord's Science Temple? Okay. All right, tell you what you're going to have to do. As of March, as of March of 2009, the Boy Science Temple is now a part of a terrorist organization of the Homeland Security. See? Now, how they going to get you? You fuck around with that UCC. That's your ass. Okay, good. Don't mess with that. And also, you're going to have to go underground and don't affiliate yourself with all the more ignorant niggas running around, running their damn mouth. You see what I'm saying? The sovereignty thing is a part of the militia groups, and it's also a part of the Homeland Security, as that's how they monitor you. But that's all terrorist activity now. You see what I'm saying? New Black Panther Party and all that. These organizations. When those boys blew up, it was going to blow up the world, the Sears Tower, in 1996. This is where they, they trapped these guys. Got them to say some things. They do these things to make these laws. And then they convicted them last March. The more is now officially a terrorist group. And when the boy got on the plane on Christmas, the new underwear bomber from Nigeria, and he's Islam, you see what I'm saying? That's all of the terrorist act activity. So what kind of Islamism? Moorish Islam, because the whole Moroccan government thing. 
See, there's a whole thing right now, but you got to understand what they're doing. And I'm not telling you this. Look, I get to travel around the country. So I'm not coming from an isolated incident where, you know, I get to see stuff going on. They got moors going to jail about dozens. They got a whole, they took the UCC and took it to a holy church, a river Baptist church, and locked up a whole church with the UCC. The two, the two people they gave all the money to, a woman named T.R.A.L. down in Charlotte and a guy in South Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina, South Carolina, they just got, they just went to prison for four years. You see what I'm saying? Because what they did is, they, what they did, the IS gave them all this money to give the people based on the UCC. Whatever, you know. And then, they gave it to them, and then they, in order to create a fraud, you got to give it. So they gave them all this money, set them up. Then they stepped in and said, you're defrauding the United States government. Now, white folks are dealing with the UCC and all that stuff, but what happens here is, because we deal with the UCC, and we're not citizens. And under the Moorish Charter, that's terrorism now. So I'm going to tell you what time it is. Because I've traveled all over and I'm telling you what's happening all over the country. You see what I'm saying? So I'm just trying to say, you're going to be one, you got your information, be solo. But don't align yourself with these knuckleheads in these organizations. Because the organizations are automatically terrorist organizations. You see what I'm saying? Well, what they do, they set they, all the brothers in Chicago, they let them drive around for a couple of years without their license. So set up. You see, because they wanted to, uh, they wanted to, they, 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 they wanted to pinpoint a certain organization. So when the laws are passed, they say, say that's a terrorist organization. Let me just tell you what, what, what time it is on that. I just want to put that there and stuff so, because people are going to jail. So if you're going to do your thing, you see what I'm saying? You're going to do your thing. You know, you be so or whatever type thing here and all. But right now, they ain't scared of nothing but the magic and none of y'all don't want to get down with that. See, they tell you your shit is evil. You see what I'm saying? But they, like I said, they roll on me 9 11. Saturday after 9 11. And I didn't even know if they were rolling on me. It was 100 cops. It was 25 cars, 4 deep. And I'm standing on the front porch and they couldn't even see me. I was in another dimension. That's how the way the spirits have had me protect. That's what used to happen with Marie Laveau. When they would come to arrest Marie Laveau, they couldn't find her house. Get the movie The Shadow with Alec Baldwin. And then that guy had a whole building there and nobody could see it. That's how my house is now. It rains on my neighbor's house and it don't rain on my damn house. People are coming in going, why are those bees growing in your front yard? So what, what? They said, oh, weeds only grow in the ocean. And Atlanta's landlocked. So you got to deal with your magic. Which leads me to the next thing in which is our ancestors now to deal with is the fairy kingdom. Yeah, fairies. Explain <laughs> 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 the movie. Uh, huh? Yeah, Avatar was one aspect. That, that was a fun one. But another movie is the... Uh, Spider-Wing Chronicles. Oh, oh, the Spider-Wing Chronicles. Now let me drop this stuff on you. Little Jeffries, Afrocentric scholar, has a wife named Rosalind Jeffries. She's been going to Africa since 1963. Gone all over the place. So she heard me back in 1993 back in 1993. And she just went crazy over the metaphysical stuff. So when she went back to Africa, she was talking to them about this, all of this, um, she was talking to them all about this metaphysical stuff. And she'd been going there for 30 years. And they looked at her, and she told me, they looked at me and they pointed to the trees, and there were real people dancing around in the damn trees. Well, you never said this to me before. They said, you never asked before. We ain't gonna get, you know, I want to spook you out of something that you don't know nothing about it. You see what I'm saying? Another girl went to Africa recently. She saw a little, they showed her this little fairies running around. Tapping in the parts of my ancestors and stuff you need to know about. Another 
sister moved to Africa. She got in her hotel room. Little Ferris came to her and told her, take your ass back to America. Because where well, you need to be, your, your job is in America. That's why you, that's, you got work to do there. That's the fairy kingdom. It's the elemental kingdom. The fairy kingdom. And they deal with nature. Especially if you start planting gardens and planting flowers and all of that type of thing. Now, this is real deal stuff. See, stuff that you real deal stuff. Let me give you another example. So, start dealing with stuff about the fairy. Get a book called uh, Richard's Guide to Fairy Folks. Um, the last thing is McCoy. To fairy folks. Get another book called Enchanted Fairy Realm, something like that by um, Andrew. What's the glass name? Andrew. It'll come again. Um, he just died. He did. He did a book called Animal Speak, Animal Wise. Um, um, Andrew. Come to me in a minute. Hmm. Uh, Andrew, it'll come to me in a minute. But anyway, in the view of the whole fairy king, that's what white folks have into. It's that whole ancestral ring. And you're going to start seeing them. You're going to start seeing these little people. As a matter of fact, you'll see these little things look like gnats. Wow, I'm down south. Little gnats that'll get all into your damn face. <laughs> People from the north will come down and do this the whole summer. So these ain't nasty. They're little fairies. And they can get bigger, but they, they, the more you believe in them, the more you will see of their ancestors. Show you some other African missions. I got a piece of paper about 10 years ago. Got the article of the Ghanaian newspaper where a guy went to sleep with a prostitute. I heard you talking about this over the lectures. Slept the prostitute. Um, didn't pay her her seven dollars. I, I guess that was Africa's fees. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> nigga could be ruling over there. <laughs> you know, hundred dollar deal is over. <laughs> I hire you, I loan you out. <laughs> So he didn't pay under seven dollars. When he got home, he didn't have no penis. When we get that newspaper, we got we had an article. So to document that, got a book called Sex and the Paranormal. Sex and the Paranormal. And it's documented in there on the Kenyan penis statues. <laughs> Sex and the Paranormal. And after I got the newspaper article, I, I used to go try to get scholarship and I found a book called Sex and the Paranormal that's in the, 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 the Kenyan penis snatches. Well, you know a, a, a show I used to call Good Burger? You know, Nickelodeon? And they had one of the guys, he's now on Saturday Night Live, and the other guy, he um, went into obscurity. Did one movie, Mystery Man, and disappeared. He's come back out now and he got a movie called See Dick Run. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is on the bootleg? Well, it's not hot enough for the bootleg, man. See, Dick one. Now, in the movie, he, you know, he, he lies and these girls are sleep with him. Yeah, I'm an astronaut and shit, but he's such a good at it and shit. They, they get down with it. Cause he, he goes in his story about him being an art astronaut, an architect, or what have you. He's so good at it until they sleep with him. So, what? Let's, okay, now. What I'm going to do now here is, is the brother here, the brother here, let me get this right quick, is back there. He wrote a new book, Brother Boutois. I'm going to put the book up so you can copy it down. It's a, it's a dynamite book on health. And the brother, it's, it's a show up book, but you got to get a hold of this book. Um, you got to get a hold of this book, and I'm going to... I want to put the book into the exhibits. So let me find the uh, transparency. So you can just go ahead and just write this stuff on down. 
as I find the transparencies for this particular brother's book. Uh, and you can write it down. The book is called Immortality, right? Yep, Immortality Guide. Immortality Guide. Brother Mouchoir. He's in the house. He's in the building. Uh, he's in the house. He's in the building. I want to put this down. Brother Mouchoir, let's see if I can find the, the, actual, uh, the actual picture of the book. I, I, I made copies of it. Um, I made copies of it. But um, see right quick if I can find it. Actual page. Um, you got a copy of it here? Yeah. Yeah, I can show it that way. Um, I can show it that way. Um, nothing can't ever find that when you need it, but. Right. And all you know. Yeah. This is the brother. This is called the Immortality, Immortality Guide. Um, and it says uh, 300 revolutionary health insights. For Eternal Health and Long Life by Dr. Boutoise. That's M-O-O-G-W-A-H-Z. So it's the Immortality Guide. Um, you need to get with this brother. Um, you need to get with this brother so you can um so he can um assist you in how you're gonna get it. Or uh, you can also you want to put the website on? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the people's help is the website. It's, it's called uh the people's healer, the people's healers.com, the people's healers.com. And the brother is Brother Moutois, Dr. Moutois, M O O T W A H Z. You want to get this book? It's got some excellent things in this particular book. Uh, in, in, in this particular book and stuff. And it's straight to the point. So you don't have to uh, go through volumes of stuff. He's just going to give you the recipe. So we need recipes now. You see what I'm saying? Like Dr. Savior tell you, you can't eat nothing but that damn. I'm going to tell you what you can eat. <laughs> <laughs> I can't eat nothing. You can't eat nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't eat nothing. It's this. <laughs> can't eat nothing. All of it is hybrid. But we're going to tell you what you can eat. You can be just as confused. See what I'm saying? Guess I try this hot dog over here. <laughs> you know, so uh, but I want I want to do that. And I'll, uh, immortality guide. I, I wanted to want to put that out there. It's an excellent book. Uh, it's it's an excellent book, you know. And so I want to put that out there. Now let me go into a few other things. Y'all all right? Yeah. Okay. A few other things.